Hello everyone! Let's create together some fun buttons animations in CSS. This is lesson number 4 of our course on mastering CSS animations. As usual, to follow along you can either use the CodePen template or you can download the starting template of this lesson from GitHub. You'll find the links to uh, both CodePen and GitHub in the YouTube video description. Ok, today we are starting from this button here, where we have this animated background coming from uh, below and this icon animation at the same time. Ok, so let's get started. We want to take a look at the structure first. We have an anchor tag with inside a span element containing the text label and then we have an inline SVG icon. Now make sure to add an area hidden of true to the icon because we don't want the screen readers to read the icon and also notice that the icon has a uh, color of current color which means that uh, it, it's going to inherit the color of the parent text element. Now let's switch to the style. First of all we want to create the animated background and the, the easiest way I can think of is by using an after pseudo element. Now the after pseudo element is used to uh, append the content to the element it is applied to. It always needs a content even though it's uh, empty because if we don't set the content the element, the pseudo element won't be visible. We want to set it in a position absolute top 0, left of 0. We want it to have the same size of the, uh, of the button, so with 100% and height 100%. Finally we want to set the background color equal to dark slate blue and save. Ok, now we have created a box of the same size of the button. Now we have to make sure that the span element, the label, of the button is above this animated background. So we can target the span element, we can add the position relative, position relative and a z index value of 2 and then we can apply a z index value of 1 uh, on uh, to the to the after pseudo element and save. Now the text is still not visible and that's because the uh, color of the text and the background color is they are the same. So if we were to apply for example a red color to the text the text would be visible. So we can delete this and we can actually push this element down by setting top equal to 100%. Now if we take again a look at the uh, final result we have uh, this uh, uh, animated background coming with um, coming up with a particular angle. So to do such effect we can apply a transform here, transform uh, of skew y. Now the skew function is used to uh, bend the element it is applied to. So for example if we set a skew y of 10 degrees we're going to skew as in bend this element. And then we want uh, then we want to move this element up uh, because it has to cover the button entirely. But instead of um, translating this element uh, by moving it up, we're going to change its scale value. So we can start with the scale y value. If we set, for example, a scale y equal to 0 0.5, I'm reducing by half. Uh, the, the height of this element and uh, the origin of the transformation is by default the center of the element. I can change that by setting a transform origin equal to center and then bottom. Now the first value is referring to the x-axis, the second one to the y. So by setting a transform origin equal to center bottom, I'm setting center bottom I want the transformation to happen from this point here. So this is my um, transformation anchor point, let's say. To show you what that means, if we change the scale y to 1, you see that I'm pushing this element up and if we move back to 0 0.5, you notice how the transformation is always happening from this point here. Now we want this element to cover the button entirely. So if we set for example a scale y value equal to 2 and if we change the top value to 50% now we have uh, this button being completely covered by the animated background. If for example we 
change the opacity to 0 0.5 because we just want to see what's underneath the animated background, you'll see that both the background and the button are perfectly aligned. And we can consider this the final stage of our animation. Actually, the final stage will be 0 degrees here and uh, scale Y2. Uh, the initial state of the animation will be 10 degrees for the skew and uh, 0 for the Y. If this value would be, for example, 0 0.1, you'll see where everything is starting from, from here. And then uh, as we uh, increase the scale Y, we are step by step covering the button. So we can stick with, uh, we can stick with scale Y0 as starting point. Now on hover, on the button, we want the after pseudo element to change these values in here with a skew that goes from 10 to 0 and a scale y that goes from 0 to 2. Now the skew is used to create this uh, um, these, uh, uh, angle animation and the scale y is used to cover entirely the button. So if we apply for example, let's remove the opacity, apply transition here on the transform property of 0 0.3 seconds and save. And now let's check the, the button. You see we have this animation here. Now we are animating the scale Y uh, function. We could have animated the height, for example, of the element. Now uh, keep in mind that this is very important when dealing with the CSS uh, animations and transitions. You always want to animate a transform, the transform property over the, the width, the height, the padding. It's also always prefer preferable to animate the translate over the top, the bottom. That's because when you animate the transform property, the performance of the animations is way, way better than if you, um, uh, if you animated the, the height, the width, and uh, uh, the top and the bottom, which will cause the repainting of the page. So it's always better to pick uh, transform over these other properties. Okay, so uh, we have to make sure that first that the animation of this uh, uh, element here is limited by the size of the button. So because the button is the parent, we can set an overflow hidden here. And uh, also on hover, on the span element, we want to change the color to lavender. And then we want to apply a transition, transition of 0.3 seconds on the span element. Now you, we, we're getting closer to the final uh, result. Uh, also, because we have used uh, twice 0 0.3 seconds, we can actually create a transition uh, duration custom property of 0.3 seconds and use it um, anytime we are setting the duration of the transition. Because this way, if we were to change, for example, this to a huge value, 3 seconds, we can just change this custom property here. Let's go back to 0.3 seconds. Okay. Uh, next, we want to animate the icon. Now, uh, let's check again uh, the final result. We have the original icon moving up and we have an identical icon coming from below. Okay, so how do we do that? So, I couldn't think of any other way other than duplicating this icon. Now, if we save, uh, because the uh, button here has a display of inline flex, it's, uh, it is going to align on the x-axis all the uh, direct children, which in this case are the span, icon, and icon. So first of all, we want to uh, we want to use a custom class icon wrapper to um, make sure that the uh, icons are in the same spot. So we're gonna give it this class. We can then uh, move the area hidden on the parent element and remove it from these two icons here. Now we can save and uh, we can target the second, uh, the second icon, so icon uh, last child. And we can give it a position absolute, top zero and left zero. And we want to target the icon wrapper, icon wrapper and give it a position of relative at the Z index of two. Now actually, because these two elements here, they have the 
some uh, common uh, values, we can move this stuff here and remove it from here. Okay, just to clean things up a little and save. Now we have both, both icons on the same spot. There is some extra vertical spacing which is caused by uh, the display of the icon which should be set to display block. And this is just because we have introduced an additional element and when we save you see that now uh, the button is more aligned, it's perfectly aligned. And that's because we have introduced this additional element here. And so the quick fix is to add the display block to the icon. Now, this last child, we want it to move uh, down a little. So we're going to apply again a transform property, a translate Y of, uh, let's try five pixels. We just want to show we are moving this button, uh, this icon, sorry. And you can see now it's slightly more uh, down than before. And once again, I'm not animating the top value, I'm animating the transform property. Uh, and uh, now we want to make sure that we are defining, uh, so this is the first child, yes. Uh, we are defining, uh, uh, we are specifying the colors of this icon. So the first one is dark slate blue. The second one is uh, color lavender. Now let me just comment this out for a second. We want to move this down by 100%, which means that it's going down of an amount which is equal to the height of the, of the icon itself. And then when we set the color lavender, it's no, longer be, uh, it's no longer visible because it has the same color of the background, but it's visible if we um, trigger the animation. Okay, and remember we can change the color of the icons using the color property because we set a current color uh, in the Elaine SVG as the color of the icon. Okay, now on hover, we want to animate the last child, the last child, uh, transform with the translate y equal to zero, while we want to change the translate y of the first child equal to minus 100%. And if we go back to the icon class, we have to apply a transition of the transform property equal to the variable transition duration. Okay, and save. Now, when we mouse over the button, the effect is there. It's, and it's also looking identical to the original, to the final effect we wanted to achieve. Now, everything is fine. We could call it a day, but there is always a but. If we check this effect on Safari, you'll see that we have a little bug. Let me increase the size of the buttons. Um, during the transition, the overflow hidden applied on the, on the parent, on the, on the button element, is kind of losing track of the border radius. So we have a squared rectangle during the transition, and then we have the border radius applied only at the end of the transition. So if you're okay with that, then your tutorial is over. But if you want, we can uh, fix this issue. Now, unfortunately, there isn't like a single property fix uh, solution. Uh, we can, uh, we have to do something like this. We can create a um, an inner element, move all the stuff inside this element, now we can copy this class and in CSS we can move some of the uh, properties from the button to this newly created element. So let's remove, for example, the display along with the aligning style because now this is the direct parent of the text and the icon. Uh, also, we want to copy the padding. Let's move this here as well. And uh, we can, uh, we have to set the display inline block on the button, inline block, and save. So, so far, nothing really has changed. We, we just, we have just introduced an additional element, but it's always the same, the, the effect, and it's still not going to work in, uh, in uh, Safari. But now, what we can do here, we can uh, uh, use the clip property, clip path property, actually, 
to uh, create the mask for the uh, animated background. The clip path property is used to define an area for the element it is applied to and everything which is outside this area is not going to be visible. So if we set for example inset 0% so we are not really setting any custom area at all we are just saying uh, everything which is outside the, the uh, inner element is not going to be visible. This is going to affect the inner element and all its children. Now if we inspect the code the inner element has the same size of the button. So what we have to do here now is we have to make sure that the after is referring now to the inner element and so here we have to change this to ampersand and then we have to target the inner element and then the it's after pseudo element and save. Uh, still we haven't fixed the issue so uh, the cool thing about the insert property is that you can use uh, now using uh, by repeating four times 0% this is the same as actually using insert 0% and then we can add this round keyword which allows me to set a border radius so by setting a radius of 0.25m which is the same radius of the button now if we check again uh, Safari we no longer have the issue. So problem solved. It's still working in Chrome, which is the um, browser we were, um, we were looking at uh, all, uh, all along, but we no longer have the issue in Safari too. Now, you may be wondering why haven't you just applied this clip path property directly to the uh, original button here? Now, uh, if you check the, the, focus, the focus effect of the original button, you see that we are using the box shadow to create a focus effect. But you may also have other uh, properties like, for example, um, a box shadow. You can just apply, we can apply a uh, shadow from Cody frame, shadow MD, for example, and save. Uh, but if you were to use the clip path property on directly on this element here, then anything which is outside the edges of the button wouldn't be visible. So you couldn't uh, apply any box shadow, any outline, any um, focus effect which goes outside the, the button itself. So it's not really ideal. And that's why we have used the an additional element, this inner element here, and applied, and that's why we have applied the uh, clip path property to this element here. Now the last thing and then we're done, we can just set a, uh, because we have to make sure that the border radius of the button is identical to the one of uh, the clip path, we can just convert this to a, to a variable. And then we can use this variable here and on the element, on the clip path property here and save. Now if we want to change the border radius in the future we can just change this custom property here and we'll make sure that the values of the clip path and the border radius of the button are exactly the same. Okay so that's all for this button. Uh, in the next lesson we'll take a look at this play animation here and uh, thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one.